So I have to write until here, right? Hello? I think that's too far. You extend behind. Is it okay, Rob? No, that extend just the line behind. So to the right or to the left? Left. So here? Yes, yes. Okay. So I will continue the a discussion of, of the density matrix. And uh, so last part of uh, yesterday, I told you that uh, if you have uh, two system, but you just make observation on a part of it, then the, the state will look like uh, mixed. Now, before uh, telling you uh, again uh, what we derived yesterday, I, I would like to start with a simple example, okay? So the simple example I want to consider is that of two spin one half, okay? So I have uh, a spin one half, which I call A, and this is the basis up, down, I use this as a basis, and the spin B, and then I will have up or down, okay? Now, the most general state that I can write using two spins, because I think we wrote it yesterday, is something like this, psi, alpha, up, up, plus beta, up, down, plus gamma, down, up, plus delta, down, down. Uh, so is it clear that the first uh, spin this refers to A and the second will refer to B? Okay, so Suppose that I want to consider just averages over some. Uh... Sorry. Yes. Um, what is the meaning of uh, like putting up and down in the, in the same uh, state? So I have to. So when I write uh, a state, I have to choose it a basis. Okay. If I have to spin, uh, what is the dimension of the inverse space? Uh, it's up and down. Sorry? Up and down. No, no. If you have two spins, what is the dimension of the Hilbert space? Four. <laughs> uh, four, four. Okay. So we need uh, a basis formed by four orthogonal states. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this basis is just formed by up, 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 down, down, up, down, down. This is a choice, okay? You can take a different basis. But this is a choice, okay? Okay. Yes. yes, yes. Okay. Now, uh, suppose that we want to con you, you, we want to compute some observer. I mean, average over. Uh, Certain observable. Okay. If I consider a spin, I remind, I remind you. So I don't care about the H bar or the two or something. I just consider Pauli matrices. Okay. I have sigma X, sigma Y, sigma Z. I, I can, for instance, consider these operators. Okay. And then, for instance, I want to know what is the average value of the spin 
Oh, sorry. The average value of sigma z of the spin n. So what I have to compute is this one, this object. So if I want to know what is sigma z of the spin a, so what I have to compute this psi, sigma z a, identity over b, because I want to know only the average value of uh, sigma z on the spin a, Sorry. Is this clear? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Good. Now, let's see how we do it, okay? Now, to do the calculation simpler, I will consider a specific example, special example. I'll just say beta equal zero, gamma equal zero, okay, alpha equal delta equal one over square root of two. This is a choice to simplify the calculation, okay? But you can do it in a, for all general uh, cases. So what I have to do is just to evaluate one half and then I have up, up plus down down, then I have sigma z a, identity over b, and then I have up, up, plus down, down, okay? Now, Just notice that the only terms which will be which will uh, give a result which is different from zero are just up up sigma z i up up and down down with down down. All the cross term vanishes because I have the identity and then I have a scalar product on v of up and down. They are orthogonal, so you get zero. Right? Yes. So you will get, up, sorry, the, the only thing you get is up sigma z a. This is, I can reduce to, to a, up a plus down over a sigma z a down of A, okay? Because also up, up, its identity is one. Do you agree? What is the result? There is one half. Uh, there is one half, yes. So what is the result? Mm, zero. Okay. Very good. So you see that this, if I measure it, so if I want to know the average value of sigma z over this state, this special case is zero. Okay. So now I want to compute. Another, uh, okay, I, I just change it here. 
I just want to compute sigma x. Okay. So the same calculation, but I want to know only the value of sigma x. Okay. So now tell me what is the result? No, why? No, no, no. Uh, I think it's zero to it is zero. Yes, yes, it is zero for the following reason. If you take a cross product like this, up, down, down with up, up. Since there is the identity on the state B is up B with down B is zero, okay? But if I take up, up with down, with up, up, okay? I have to do up, up, sigma X of A and the identity, the up, up. But I remind you that this is zero one one zero. Okay, so if I compute up sigma x up, this is zero. Okay. Yes. Very good. So this is zero. Now. The same I can do it for y. If I do it with y, for the same reasons, you find that this is zero. So the result is that you have this state, which is up, up, plus down, down, such that all the components, so you can do it for three components for X, Y, and Z, but all the components of, if you take a vector N color sigma, you find zero. Okay, because you can take any director on the sphere, but then you have to compute uh, the average value of the component x, y, and z, and you find that this is zero. So here we did it for the spin A, but you can do the same for the spin B. Now, I tell you, just forget that this was the starting point. Forget about this. If I ask you, remember what I told you, what we did yesterday with the block sphere. If I tell you, can you tell me if you have a spin one half, the state of the spin one half, of the spin A, which has this property, is pure or is it mixed? Pure. No, it is mixed because do you remember the block sphere? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, oh, you, what's the question again? Yes, the question is the following. Now you forget about the state side, okay? I just look at the reduced, so I, I just look at the spin one half, at the spin A. If I have a state such that all the components of the spin are zero, what is the corresponding state for the spin A? Is it a pure state or is it a mixed state? 
you said pure. However, it is not possible that it's pure because yesterday we saw that for a pure state, this should be an eigenvalue in a given direction of the spin pointing in a given direction. And here you see that all the components are zero. So try to remember from yesterday, what, what is the only state, mixed state? So I just tried it here, okay? Remember that you just wrote rho equal one half. So let's call it rho A. Identity plus a x sigma x plus so I do not write a okay this should be so should I write it I write it so x a plus a y sigma y a plus a z sigma okay so <coughs> What is the choice of the coefficient ax and y and z such that this is zero? For any choice of the direction. O equal to zero. Yes. So this is just a, a, a state which is described by the identity. Which is what which was the maximally mixed state. Uh, please listen to me. I mean, if I see no faces, I don't understand if you are following me, if you are not following. Can you switch off the the video? It's already very difficult to do to talk in such a situation. But if you are just a black, a black screen, then I, 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 I don't understand with whom I'm talking. Okay. So if you cannot do it today, because I mean next week, next you should just appear, okay? If you can. Now, is what I'm saying clear or not? Uh, actually, I, I still don't get the, the point where uh, you take all co coefficients to become zero and then you say it's a maximally mixed state. So the only state, so my point is the following. If you look only at part of the system, this is the, the quantum state of the spin A, for example, will look like mixed state. So I'm trying to explain you that the concept of a mixed state is not related only to the way we prepare the system if it's in contact with some thermal bath or we have some uncertainty. It's also related to the fact that our observation on the system can be on part of it. So, for example, if, if you take two spins and you prepare a generic quantum state of two spins, and then for some reason, you just take one spin and you send it to China and the other one you send it to the state, okay? They are far away separated, but they are in this particular psi state. Somebody who is in the lab, so the total state of the system is a pure state, okay? Is the state psi, but if there is somebody, a physicist in the lab in the States or a physicist in the lab or in China, they both can do experiment either on spin A or in spin B, okay? They have no access. So suppose, let's make it even more drastic, even if this is not important, suppose that they cannot talk. 
the in principle they can also talk but for simplicity just they can do all the measurements uh, on this collection of i generate a zillion of uh, state like this and i send it to china and to the states and to, to the two different labs what i mean now if i'm in the lab in china or in the states i can only measure one spin suppose i can only measure spin a okay so it's not that i i cannot do anything of spin b so the only thing i can do i can compute properties of one spin what i'm telling you is that under these circumstances i will in general see a mixed state so it, it what i measure is something that I think, okay, this is like a mixed state, it's not a pure state. So the, the, the result of all my experiment will be identical as if I had, in this particular case, a density matrix which was proportional to the identity. So with, not, with the purity smaller than one, and with the purity equal to one fourth. Okay. Yes. So. Uh, but purity must be one, 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 two. It's not one fourth. Sorry. For no. the identity, and purity is one two. So I have to take the square of. So it's one two. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's one half, right? So what I was saying is I have to take one fourth of the Yeah, game. yeah, yeah. I... Okay. So I just repeat to be clear. So the trace of uh, so I get one fourth the identity. Okay. And this is equal to one half. Okay. Now uh In order, so in order to distinguish the fact that I have a pure state and not a mixed state, then the only thing that the thing I have to do is just to do a measurement or just look at the properties of a combined system. So, for instance, I can look at, for instance, sigma z a and sigma z b. So, if I compute this average, what do I get? Oh my God. Um, hmm, should get um, uh, one. What I get one because you see, I am by just looking at sigma z a sigma z b. What I would like to know if the two spins are uh, parallel, okay? So, here the two components either up, up, or down, down. But in both cases, they are parallel. So when I compute the all the scalar product, the cross terms disappear, but then up, up, and down, down, that will give you always one plus one. Oh, sorry, I didn't get how to get one in this case. Yes, so let's do it. So I just write one term, okay? Just so. So I have terms like this up, up, sigma z a, sigma z b, up, up. Okay? 
So up sigma z a up is one times one is one. Okay. So this is one. But then I also have terms which are down, 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 down. Now the energy value of sigma z a is minus one, but this is also the case for sigma z b. It's minus one times minus one is one. Okay. And then the other terms up, down, uh, sorry, uh, down, down, up, up. These are zero. Okay. So the state is pure as long as I see I I see the whole system. If I observe only part of it, so for example, subsystem A, then uh, the system locally, so in the lab in China or in the lab in the state or the lab in ICDP, it will look like a mixed state. Okay. Now, if I ask you what is the mixed state corresponding to the uh, subsystem A, okay? What I have to do? So let's try to do the exercise for this symbol case, okay? So I did it in general yesterday, but probably it was not very clear. So I really would like to do it here, okay? So I take this psi and I construct psi. Sorry. Let's do it. Uh, so I have a generic operator O. Okay. Times the identity. And then I have to evaluate over psi. 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 So I will consider, I mean, it's easy to do it in general. Yesterday we do it in general. I want to do it on this particular case because ju just we see how it works, okay? Now, this is equal to one half. And then I have the various steps, like up, up uh, O A identity up uh, up uh, plus up uh, up. Uh. So here I should write O O times identity. I don't do it. Okay. Down down plus down down. Up, up, plus, down, 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 down. Okay? So here I do not simply do not write all A times identity. Okay? Now tell me. Let's see, I change to have color. No, there are no colors, so we do it. So you see that this is the spin V. So this identity, this is what? One. Very good. So this is equal to one half. So I just write it up. Up, O, A, up, okay?
This is what? Sorry, this is what? This uh, uh, zero. 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 Because this, I have a scalar product of this with this is zero. So this is zero. This? Uh, zero. And this is just down. Okay. Yes. Very good. So since we did it step by step for this simple case, then we just, we want to do it in general. Okay. So I'll do it in general, but first I want to do something else. I want to compute the reduce Reduce density magnet. For this particular case, okay? So the total density matrix is psi. Psi. Okay, so if I have a state psi, the corresponding reduced density matrix is, I mean, the corresponding density matrix is nothing else than psi psi. Okay. So, yes, I told you, okay, let's define this row A, which is the trace over the only B degrees of freedom of the state psi. So, you see, that this was a four by four density matrix. The reduced density matrix, since it's related to the spin one up, will be two by two. So let's do it step by step, okay? So what I have to do is the following. Uh, let's see. I have to do, I have to sum over the index B. So I just write it this way, okay? Oh, uh, but uh, I think that the uh, row A is uh, a matrix and trace uh, is uh, uh, a coefficient on like, uh, uh, they, they, they are not equal because you take the trace. Is not a matrix, and then the no, left. No no, 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 sorry. No, I'm taking a partial trace. Ah, oh, yeah. So that's the point. When I write trace over B, I'm just taking the trace only on a part of the system, which is the subsystem B. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. So I'm trying to do it for this particular example, so that you see. Okay. Yes. Look, uh, look here. So I'll, I'll try to fix. So can I erase this below? Is it okay? Yes. Yes. I have more space. So I want to do it for this simple example, and then you will see that uh, how it works. Okay. So. Let's say I just write trace B, meaning again that I'm just doing the trace over only the indices of the, the B part. Let's see how it works. So this state is one half, I just put it outside, and then I have to this object, which is up, 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 plus up. Up, down, down, plus, down, down, up, up, plus, down, 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 down. Okay? 
So far, I did nothing. I, I just rewrote psi psi. Okay. Then now look. So the second uh, this one is the B. This one. So I have to do the trace only on B. So it means that I have to write one half and I just put here B just to make it clear of this one of all this uh, B plus B all this B, okay? I have to sum up only on the diagonal indices of the spin B, of the degrees of freedom B, okay? Yes. So, look, this term will give me up, up. Okay, so when I do the scalar product of up B, up B with this term, I will get up up, right? Where do I write? I just write it here, okay? Okay. Hello. Oh, I don't. I do not see it well. It's not clear to me. Okay. So I, I just write out of these four. I just write the first term, okay? Because there is no space. So I just write. I can do the following: up a up b up. A up B up all these three. Now you see that they live on different spaces. I have to do the scalar, I have to sum over the B components. Okay, so I have to do the scalar product of up B with up B, which is what one, and up B with up B, which is one. So the only thing I remain with is up A, up A, okay? Yes. And this is what I wrote here. So let's see the second term, okay? So the second term is this one, is up, sorry, is down A, down B. Okay, so tell me, what is this term? This will be zero because up B without B, scalar product gives me one. Yes. But down B without B gives so, me zero. Yeah. So this term does not contribute. The same is true for this term. While this term will give me down down okay yes what is this this is row a okay so you see so what is this So this we call it reduced density matrix of the subsystem A. So look, what, what, what is this density? You know what is this? Uh, I mean, it's a special matrix. What is that? It's a maximally mixed state. Yeah, it's the identity, okay?
do you see this? If I look at uh, this, is a, we found the result as before. So when we trace out the B term, the effective density matrix is, it looks like the identity or proportional to the identity. Uh, say that you do not understand or say that you understand. Uh, okay, so we are getting the result from the, the one you stated before, but is there any other result that is not a maximally mixed state? Yes. So I, I, I do it again, okay? Now, now just, I just took this example. So I just do it again. I do it in general. Now you should be able to follow, I hope. So you tell me if it works or not. Just a moment. Okay. So now I, I just write it, write it in general, okay? So I consider two subsystems A and B, and I have two basis sets, alpha and beta. Okay. I mean, we don't need to consider spin one half, we just have a set of states. Okay, alpha. I call it this basis for the subsystem A. Alpha and the, the basis for the subsystem B beta. Okay. Hmm? Yes. Okay, I want to hear all the others. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Hmm. Now, a generic state we can write as psi sum over alpha and beta of some coefficient a alpha beta alpha beta okay so yes, this yes. is just a basis and uh, so these are all possible coefficients okay now I want to compute the average value of an operator which depends only on alpha. So this means that I have to do the following average. Psi. Psi. Okay, so this is the operator and then I want to compute and this is on the subsystem B, it's the identity because I'm just looking only. So if I do this, so I just write sum over alpha and beta, sum over alpha prime and beta prime. And then I have A star of alpha prime, beta prime, A alpha beta, and then I have alpha prime, beta prime of A identity alpha beta. Right? Right. Okay. So this is the identity over B. Okay. Now you see that the scalar product of beta prime beta is what? It's uh, delta Kronecker. 
is just delta beta prime beta. Okay. So this is equal to sum over alpha alpha prime beta of a star alpha prime beta a alpha beta and then I have alpha prime o a alpha Okay, so what I found, I found something that you know very well. That if you want to compute some average value of an operator of A on the state side, uh, I, I don't write that any, okay, so. This is the result. The sum of alpha, alpha prime, beta of a star, alpha prime, beta, a alpha, beta, and then I have alpha prime or a alpha. Okay. This is the result. This is the first result. I, 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 are we okay with that? Yes. Look, I hear only four person. So I see uh, only yes. Four. yes. So at least just react, please. Oh, professor. Yes. I'm a bit lost to why the summation down does not have beta prime. Sorry? I'm a bit lost why the summation down does not have beta prime. Because there was beta prime identity over B beta. And so this is a Kronecker delta. So one summation disappears. The summation over beta prime disappears. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, it's okay. So here there is beta and beta prime, then there is a delta chromega and all I have only beta. Okay, so far, Nothing appeared, no, nothing dramatic happened. I, I just wrote if I have a, a state of any, of a, of, on a given basis, this is the result of an average over any observable. Now, the question that I'm trying to address today and yesterday is the following Can I write the same? Quantity can I write as the trace of a row A or A? So, is it possible to express? Uh, yes. So, is this clear? Okay. Uh, yeah, because it's in the, I think it's in the beginning of the lecture at this one exactly so this is the so the only thing i want to know is so the answer is yes and i really want to know what is roy okay so roy should be computed in this way so first I write down, uh, so I explain this way, so I hope it will be simple. I write 
a star alpha prime beta prime a alpha beta. So this I wrote side side, okay? Sorry, I I there is no equal sign yet, okay? So first I write side side, which is this one alpha prime alpha beta prime beta. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Is it the same thing when we write the trace of O A times O A or the trace of O A times O A? Because sometimes no, the, the same when you write what? trace of root A times O A or O A times root A. It's the same because uh, they commute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have a cyclic, so traces uh, the cyclic property. So you can mm -hmm. just make this okay. So it's the same. Okay, so this is just side side written explicitly. Okay, so then I have to do. So the rule is the following. I have to do the trace over B, which means, so I just take the diagonal components over B, which means I just take sum. Since I, I use beta and beta bar, I call it uh, beta prime, I call it sum over beta bar of beta bar, beta bar, okay? And just to make it clear, not confusing, I just put it here. So I have to do beta bar. Okay, so I have to do this color product. Huh? But this is symbol because this is a delta Kronecker and this is a Kronecker delta. And you end up with the same result as before. Row A is nothing else than alpha, alpha prime, beta, A star, alpha prime, beta, A alpha, beta, alpha prime, alpha. So just to conclude, uh, the, the the presentation when I have only local so if I have observable which are local in the subsystem the the in general the states will look like me in general mixed and uh, this is so, and it is just obtained by tracing out the B degrees of freedom, just by doing partial trace. Is it clear now or not? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, this part is clear actually from yesterday. Okay, I think uh, now. I want to consider one special case, another special case. That is the following. Suppose now, so I just take one example. So I just go back to the spin, okay? So I just take um, the following example down A, okay, gamma up B plus delta down B, okay. Now, uh, 
Can you tell me what is rho A in this case? Um, sorry, Professor, what's the question again? The question is, I, I consider this state here. I want to know what is Roy, the reduced density matrix. Is that the formula that we, the, the formula that we, we just... Uh, yes. Compose? Yeah. But you have to apply this formula, okay? Yeah. So do it and send me the answer. So the formula that we wrote is the general one. Now I want to know the, the result for this specific case. Are you doing it or? Uh... Uh, yes, yes, we are trying to. I'm, okay. I'm trying to. Okay. Is that uh, is uh, uh, alpha 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 square uh, up up uh, plus uh, beta square down down. Okay, for simplicity, let's make all the coefficients real. Huh? It's fine. Okay, that's it. Sorry, it's a density matrix, so it should be like this. You say yes, yes. Ah, uh, almost. It's close, but it's not. Uh, you also need the mixed term. Uh, yeah. like, for example, the I think we have the. Oh, the, sorry, uh, I, I just made a mistake. So we have uh, up, up, down, beta square down, down. Okay, then. Uh, so it's down. I keep writing. Yes. Oh uh, yeah. Like. Oh, oh, you have to uh, the 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 beta part down down, but it must be density measure. Huh? I have this one. No, I mean the the previous one. <laughs> With um, the beta sorry, square. professor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I think you missed the constant gamma and delta in the first two terms. Yes, I did it. And I, I think I'm right. Uh, what? Uh, okay, let me try again. Yeah. No, no, I mean, in principle, you have it, but then, uh, uh, sorry, what is your name, Valerius? You should remember so something I did not tell you, okay? But you can do it later. You have to normalize. If you normalize, you will find that gamma square plus delta square is one and alpha square plus beta square is one. That's why you will see that uh, the gamma and the delta disappear. Oh, okay. okay, okay. So this is, and then do I need something more? Yes, another yes. Um, cross term. Yeah. I mean, we know it's admission, so it should always be alpha, beta, down, up. Okay? 
So you can verify that this is the case. Now, is this a pure state or a mixed state? But I doubt the but I doubt for the coefficient they must have the conjugate. Uh, I took it real for simplicity, okay? Oh yeah. So I take alpha and beta. So you're right. So if alpha and beta are complex, then uh, so you will get alpha beta star and alpha star beta. But I just take for simplicity real, okay? Yes. Now, my question is that, is this a mixed state or a pure state? Pure so, state, pure state. Very good. You can write this as alpha up plus beta down times alpha up plus beta now, so you can write as something like psi A, psi A. And if you can write the density matrix as a projector, 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 sorry, then this is a pure state. You can also verify really by really doing this calculation. And verifying that the trace of rho squared is one. Now, can can you tell me what is so in the example I gave you before? So with up up plus down down, the reduced density matrix was mixed. Actually, in that example, it was completely mixed. It was proportional to the identity. Uh, here we are on the opposite side. Also, the reduced density matrix is pure. There is a, some special feature of this state that uh, uh, appear here. Just look at the state. So the state in this case can be written as something like phi A times, let's call it phi B. So you can write it as a product of the wave function of the subsystem A times the wave function of the subsystem B. And here it comes something which I, I probably you heard, but I, I don't know. Now, every time you have a pure state that you can write as the product of a state of one subsystem times, times the state of a different subsystem, you call this separable. If you have a separable state, the reduced density matrix will be pure. Okay. If the state is not separable, so for instance, in this extreme example, if I give you up, up plus down, down. Can you write as a separable state? There is no way in which you can write this as a product of something which belongs to A and something which belongs to B. In this case, or in general, when the state is not separable, it is called entangled. So entanglement is a very weird feature of quantum system, which is very difficult to, I mean, to study and, uh, but 
it has very, very important properties that if you don't know, I don't know if you heard about quantum information, quantum computation, they play a role, uh, entanglement play, plays a very important role in, in this thing. For the time being, I think it's enough that you know just this very basic concept of separable state and entangled state. So essentially, I point out the following. When the state is separable, then you see all the information, all the, the thing which belong, all the properties of the subsystem A are contained in the wave function of the subsystem A. So when you trace out the B, you see nothing. The, 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 the two subsystems do not talk. While when uh, the state is entangled, then there are properties which are related to the two subsystems and cannot be separated. So if you look at only one of them, you will not get, you will lose this knowledge. For instance, in this particular case, you see that if the, the two spins in this particular case, they are always parallel. I mean, if you can compute the correlation in any, so in, uh, in the Z direction, sorry, then you will see that the two components are uh, parallel. However, when you trace out one of the two subsystems and you observe only two of them, then you have no idea uh, on how to reconstruct this correlation. Okay. Now, exercise that you have to do uh, yourself to get acquainted with the density matrix field. So just consider a spin one system. I have questions, Professor. Uh, uh, is that when when the two system two subsystem are not uh, se separable, so we we look at uh, one system and then we we see uh, the information. We can deduce the information of the other system. We cannot deduce information. Well, sorry again. Repeat the question. I mean, I mean, when when two sub subsystem are not separable, so when we look at uh, one system, so we can deduce the information about other system. We cannot re deduce the information. Oh. Okay. No, no, sorry, no. Let's begin. Uh, if I have two subsystems, A and B, yes. and I observe only A, I cannot say anything about B. Okay, in any case, because I'm not observing B, so I only can say something. Um, yeah? Sorry, sorry. Can you please mute your mic if you're not speaking because the noise is really annoying. Thank you. So if you have... Uh, uh, if you have a subsystem A and B, and you just observe A, sorry, I just look at the camera here. So you, see. So you have A and B. So this is A and this is B. So if you observe A, you cannot say anything about B in any case. The only difference between separable and entanglement and entanglement is that when you observe A, and the system, the state is separable, then A looks like a pure state, is a pure state. If the total system is entanglement, entangled, then A will, uh, will itself look at, uh, as a mixed state. Okay? Oh, yes. This is the difference.
Okay. So exercise that you have to do yourself. Consider the following density matrix. Question, is this the density matrix? Okay, just verify that this describes the quantum state. Okay, now I want to know, so if I give you the operator JZ, which is E zero minus one, zero, 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 I want to know, the average value of JZ of uh, JZ on this state. Okay. Oh, uh, professor. Yeah. Uh, why is the trace of row is not equal to one? Uh, I think it's uh, just a moment. So because I just made a mistake, this is one. Okay. Right. Um, can you repeat the question, please? The average. Yeah. So first, you have to show that this row has all the properties of a density matrix. For instance, uh, I made a mistake and we already saw that the trace was not one, but this was my mistake in writing. So you have to check if so trace is one, uh, positive, positive, definite, admission, so all these things. Okay. After doing that, you want to I want to know what is the average value of this operator on the state row. Okay. Good. Is it okay with this exercise? Uh, yes. Okay. So, second exercise. So for Thursday, I really would like that you all show, I mean, I, I, do you have all the camera in your laptop? Yes, I guess so. Please show up. I don't want to see just names. I want to see your face, okay? I, I did not hear the answer. Yes, we will do. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, I just said uh, two times, two answers, then uh, I really would like Actually, to I have problem with my camera, so I cannot uh, turn uh, on. Call, call them uh, by, by Thursday. So what is the problem? Just contact ICTS. I mean, uh, it's impossible. So I do not hear even the yes from all the others. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I, I, I will fix it. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> No, no. So, um, um, professor, I think Lian is in the Leonardo building, so she doesn't have the webcam with her. Yeah. Who, who is who does not have a camera? I think Lian uh, because the, she's the, in the, the computer LB. in the Leonardo building has no camera. You can, you can take your camera with you. I think. Sorry, but who are you talking about, Julia? I, I no. mean, Lian. I'm I'm Leon, uh, and I'm at the Leonardo building, and the computer at the Leonardo building has no but camera. That's no okay. Yeah. So uh, we will discuss this at the end of the lecture. I think we should call this. But do the peop do people that do not have the camera have the microphone or not? 
Uh, yes, I, I, I can speak. So you should not speak, just a moment. So I see what is name. So Lady Anne, I, I see twice. So Joshua, who is Joshua? Yes, uh, you, uh, yes, I have Joshua, to, I okay. I yes, have yes. to connect to, to the I need to swap something. Jonah, who is Jonah? Where is Jonah? Jonah is missing. He is uh, also in the United Julia, Jonah. Okay, so you see that you have the camera. Very good. So, Maha. Where is Maha? Ah, hi. So, very good. Puya, do I pronounce it correctly or not? Puya Tava? Yes. Show up. Can you show up? Or show up next Thursday? Very good. So then, uh, so wait, Jonah, are you there? I, I see you twice. I muted. Yes, I am, Professor. Very, very good. Do you have a camera or not? Uh, yeah, so I am also in Leonardo presently. Um, um, but but can, look, I would like to understand. Very good. It's there. So, Jonah, but can you connect from uh, in, a, in a place where you have a camera or not? Uh, I, I, I will try to sort that out uh, okay, very by good. Thursday. If I can't, I will let you know. Let me know. Okay, so we should, I mean, just imagine that instead of talking here, I just talk here. Okay? Would you like to see a talk by a boss, professor? No. Okay, so just try, let's try to have some interaction as much as we can. Okay? Now I see your face, your smiling face. It's much better this way. Very good. So next exercise. Um, consider the state slide as follows. Alpha up, up plus beta up, down plus gamma down up plus delta down down okay where you have alpha square plus beta square plus gamma square plus beta square is equal to one okay Now, first question, compute row A. So you compute it, okay? Now. Sorry. Mm. Yes. So here we have a pure state with this condition. We have a pure state of two spins. You have to compute just the reduced density matrix of one spin. Okay? This is something similar to what we did before. Now, the exercise is, however, find the coefficient such that. Row A is equal to uh, what half the identity? Okay. Is this uh, exercise clear? Yes.
third exercise. Suppose that you have two density matrix of uh, spin one half. So you have one plus and one dot sigma. And uh, so this is row one and row two of so one half the identity plus n two dot sigma. Okay, and one and a two are two unique vectors. And one and n two unique vectors. I want to know. So, Sorry, professor. Yeah. The I I missed the last question. What what what's that? The fine coefficient such that rho a equal to half of the identity. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. So the third exercise is the following. Suppose that you have a spin one half and you have two states, row one and row two, which are parameterized by two different unit vectors, n one and n two. So let's say find the condition of two density matrix are called orthogonal if the trace row one row two is equal to zero. Okay. I want to know what is the condition on n one n two to verify this orthogonality. Sorry, Professor. Yes. Uh, I do, what's uh, the last question? So I want to know what is the constraint obeyed by N1 and N2 such that the trace of 1 times rho 2 is 0. OK. Yes. Very good. Uh, so I'm uh, so I finish here yeah, with the density matrices. So if you have questions, just ask now. No, you can ask also in the next days. But I, I want to in the last couple of minutes, I would like to tell you something else. Questions? No. Um, professor. Yes. Uh, do you have a suggestion on how to relate more of the this density matrix physically? I mean, sometimes I still don't get the physical gist of the of the equations you wrote and some uh, stuff you talk about related. But I mean, the mathematical stuff is not really hard. The physical stuff is quite hard for me. Yes. Uh, so I, I would say the following. Let's do the following. So first, it is better that you learn the, the mathematics, okay? And then we discuss because if you just get uh, acquainted with the with the mathematics, then it's easier to do exercises such that you really get uh, also the sense of it. So I would say, for instance, next week, we can talk again, we can do some tutorial, or we can have uh, some discussion, okay? And then it becomes easier if you just get acquainted with the, with the manipulation. Otherwise, you are too concentrated on, the, on discussing about various steps, okay?
So don't worry. I mean, it's totally normal. So I think today I finish five minutes early because uh, I have a faculty meeting. There is a faculty meeting. But uh, so next Thursday, we'll start a new chapter, a new chapter of uh, that is time dependent perturbation theory. So, so far, I guess you studied cases in which you can solve the, the Schrodinger equation exactly. So, you study the free particle, the infinite square well, the harmonic oscillator, but in many cases, it is impossible to solve the, the, the Schrodinger equation and to determine the properties of the quantum system exactly. So, so then it's, it's uh, very important to develop methods, approximate methods that allow you to determine in, a, in an approximate way, the eigenstate, eigenfunctions, sorry, eigenstate, eigenvalues, or the time evolution of uh, the wave function. So next week, what we are uh, sorry next Thursday. What we are going to do is study the easiest. So the first step in this direction, we will study perturbation theory. The problem is very well defined. So suppose that you know one case in which you can solve the problem exactly, and then you have a small perturbation. So how the eigenstate and eigenvalues are modified, and we will do this both. First, starting with time independent. So we just look at the eigenstate eigenvalues, and then we study time dependent perturbation, meaning we are seeing how the dynamics of the system is perturbed. Okay. So, so first of all, I stop because we finished. And second, uh, we will meet Thursday. Now, I asked one question and we just 